guys, we're back with another Quick Quips, and this time, Steven Seagal is above the law. You guys think you're above the law. You ain't above mine. Above the law. It was released in 1988, and um, it's probably his second best movie. Yeah, also, this was Steven Seagal's first movie, so he has a baby face. He's not a uh, fat and ugly like he is now <laughs> yeah pam Greer was the co-star uh, also sharon stone was in it but she was barely in it really she was more of like a side character like an incredibly minor character she was not very important but pam Greer was she was um steven skull's partner throughout the entire film and uh we thought she was gonna die but she didn't it's a good thing yeah pam Greer's the queen of black exploitation so we like her. <laughs> oh leave God. that in. Leave that in. That's I'm great. Not, I'm not leaving that in. No, leave that in. It's great. It's great, man. Um, basically, this movie's bad, but it's bad in a good way. <laughs> you know, it's not like you know, it's not like it's not like a terrible film where you just you want to turn it off and it's twenty minutes in. No, you can you ha like this thing's really enjoyable. In the way that it's stupid, right? It's not well written at all because the CIA want to kill this random ass senator, and it's like, why? Why does like they never really explain why they want to kill the senator? Do they? They do in an exposition scene that you obviously weren't paying attention to. Exposition scenes are boring, man. <laughs> Fucking. Of course, you don't want to watch exposition. In a shitty '80s action movie, right? Of course I don't. Like, and they, but they explain it in an exposition scene that I wasn't paying attention to. Because who wants to listen to exposition in a fucking '80s action film, especially if it stars Steven Seagal? I liked, um, actually, the gore. I think was like the like the highlight of this movie. I think, aside from Pam Greer, um, I think the gore was the best part. And, well, I mean, she was the best actor in the entire film. Pam Greer was the best actress in the, just the best actor in the entire film. She, she just, she shamed, she shamed everybody. She put everyone to shame, man. She was, she's a much better actor than Steven Seagal, obviously, because he only knows how to act in one tone of voice. He, he always talks like this in every single scene that he's in. It's like, he, he doesn't feel any emotions, is what I'm no saying. No emotions? No emotions. Let's, let's hear your Steven Seagal happy. I'm happy. All right. I'm sad. I'm angry. <laughs> I'm I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm Steven Seagal, and I'm above the law. <laughs> Basically, this movie is shit, but it's a tasty piece of shit. It's got like uh, some unicorn, uh, like strawberry flavoring on it, with a uh, uh, ice cream sundae cherry. On. <laughs> with a cherry on top. Get that out of your memory. Oh, right, right, right. Basically, my thoughts were, this movie's bad, but it's bad in a good way. So if you like shitty 80s action movies, you, uh, you'd you probably like it. Also, one thing i like to mention, the soundtrack is great. I really like the soundtrack. It's the weird thing about old Steven Seagal movies, the soundtrack kicks ass. Like, I don't know why, but, like, all the ones we've watched recently have really good soundtracks. I... Uh, yeah, I just I like I just like eighties action. I just like eighties action movies, like soundtracks. I like the sound, like the synth and the eighties keyboard, killer, love it. But yeah, I think the one thing I didn't like about it was like, I feel like the villains weren't really good, and they weren't really enjoyable in a except for like a few of the guys that are like really enjoying being a villain. The other times are just kind of boring, you know. The villains are kind of, like nothing really to write home about. I feel like they're like, oh, we wanna we wanna kill the senator. Yeah, that that's our motive. <laughs> we wanna kill the senator. It's not very interesting, but um, it's a shitty eighties action movie, so Still. can't really act, ask for more. You know, you shouldn't expect any story from a Steven Seagal film. I told you last time, don't go to a filmography if you're looking for good films. And I meant it. His films don't even... The story doesn't matter. You go to the films, you either see 
his shitty acting, the action, which is pretty good, and usually all of his movies are pretty gory. So maybe that for as well, those three reasons. If you want to go because like you, you like Steven Seagal, I'm afraid it's too late for you, my friend. Uh, so the first rating, which is real movie rating, three. This movie is terrible. The, it's not written well at all. It's not directed very well. And the good actors try their best, like Pam Greer. I feel like she's like the best actor in the movie, as I said earlier. But all the other actors are kind of struggling a bit. They show more emotion than Steven Seagal Stoneface, but they do, um, they're not, it's like the eating, acting is decent, but it doesn't really save the movie, in my opinion. And giving it a three might even be generous. But, um, to an, an ironic level, I give it like a seven. At an, uh, like, ironic enjoyment. But a Steven Seagal movie, like Steven Seagal standards, I'd probably give it like 7.5 Steven Seagal ratings. So you didn't like this as one as much as Hard to Kill? Hard to Kill was better? Well, actually... Because I think, didn't you give Hard to Kill an 8 on the Steven Seagal scale? Well, actually, hang on. On the Steven Seagal scale, I'd actually give this an 8.1. <laughs> Please explain. <laughs> you gotta explain that if you're gonna say that. Yeah, I'm gonna explain it. I think it's better than Hard to Kill, but just a little bit better. Like, I would say... I like this movie more than Hard to Kill, so maybe like an 8.5... Instead of an 8.1. So I like this movie more than... But I don't think I should give it a 9. I think that's being way too generous. So... <laughs> I think an 8.5 is good. Because it's better than Hard to Kill in my opinion. Just out of curiosity. Which Steven Seagal movie is a 10 on the Steven Seagal scale? I would say... Uh, I think uh, the only movie that would get a 10. And this is the only movie that would ever get a 10 on the Steven Seagal rating is... Under Siege. I saw that movie, and it was easily his best. Like, on real movie standards, I would give that movie not a... Not because of him, though. Not because of him. He's not the reason it's good. It's because it's actually got good directing and writing. That's why. <laughs> it's got good direction and writing. And the sets are pretty nice. It's Tommy Lee Jones is in it. Also, Tommy Lee Jones. You can't go wrong there. Yeah. It's so weird, though. Like, Steven Seagal is in movies with actual good actors. Yeah. Like, what's up with that? Recap. A, like, real movie rating, three. Um, ironic enjoyment, seven. Steven Seagal, 8.5. So, uh, I'm signing off, guys. It was uh, good to talk to you about another Steven Seagal movie. I'd like to see you next time on Quick Quips with Steven Seagal. I'm signing off. You weren't recording? No! Go! Fuck! All right. Hey guys, we're back with another episode of Quick Quip. No episode. No episode. We're back with another Quick Quip. <laughs>